Yes. Is this a green room too? It's not a green room. No. No. Yeah, you can get it. Um, it feels good. Um, I knew that, uh, you know, there was a couple times, and actually in the first round, he came out really, really aggressive. Um, we knew that he came out aggressive, but I didn't expect him to be that aggressive. And I was like, he's eventually going to slow down. I mean, first couple rounds he got, he landed a couple good shots, but then after that, I guess he felt like he can try to finish me, and he kept on coming. And um, I tied up with him a couple times. He didn't feel strong. I kind of took him down in the first round, but he ended up popping back up. But even in exchanges and whatnot, even in over and under positions, I felt like I was stronger in those positions. And uh, but he just kept on slowing down. You know, if you're throwing that much power shots in the first round, you know, you're gonna fade away very quickly. And uh, between the second round, I was, told my trainer, I was like, I think I can submit him. And uh, just going into the second round, continued doing the same thing. He was throwing a lot of fire punches. I was like, he's eventually going to slow down. He threw an overhand, and I seen him come from around the corner. I was like, okay, ducked it, shot in, took him down. And when I took him down, I ended up landing on his guard. But when I ended up going to half guard, gave him a, a quick body punch, and he threw his hands up, and I just grabbed his wrist. And when I grabbed his wrist, I was like, I know this is not going to be that easy. I grabbed it, threw my arm over, and I locked it up. When I locked it up, it was pretty much, I was good from there. Post my interview, I told uh, the guy that uh, the fight happened like two fights earlier. When you had some weight cuts, you would be probably not out in the first round. How does that change in uh, preparing the way before the fight? Well, well, the biggest thing about it is, you know, weight cutting, weight cutting, if you have a bad weight cut, if you, you need to get, you probably need to try to finish your guy in the first round. But usually bad weight cuts put you in positions where, like, you keep yourself extremely hydrated. So when it's time for you to rehydrate, you're not hydrated all the way. So when you take shots, you can't take shots like you need to. So uh, this weight cut, you know, it was smooth. I didn't have to worry about nothing. And, you know, um, I was on weight and I was actually probably two pounds off weight. I was actually probably what two pounds away from making weight. I went on the treadmill, I walked for an hour at a you know three point incline and I felt really good afterwards. Woke up the next morning, I felt really good the next morning and my hydration process was amazing. Um, and I wasn't I didn't feel tired at all. Um well I was talking to somebody earlier. I told them that uh, they told me after the second one they was going to change the name. This is the fourth one now. Uh, they haven't still changed the name. Do you think it should be the Von Vlue? I mean, I, it, originated, it originated from Jason Von Vlue. But, you know, if I can take, if I can take the Von, if he can, he can keep the Von and just put the Pru in there, yeah. it'll be good. So basically, during the fight, uh, we saw Alexei Juk throwing uh, a lot of uh, core punches, liver punches your torso over there in the first round and later we saw you like doing yourself some distance uh, by, by those uh, front kicks that you, that you demonstrated so was this the answer for those previous uh, for those previous liver shots or was it like just a spontaneous decision to do because well, it, it's repeated it was like repeatedly seen right yeah yeah um it the, the, he finished I think Gian Volante with uh, the body shots or whatnot. Yeah. I know I can take the body shots. I just didn't want to take that much. And you know, the couple that he threw, he threw probably one or two that, that landed pretty solidly. But you know, the, the thing that we emphasized this whole training camp was to keep my elbow tight. And I think I did a good job during the fight keeping my elbow tight. Because I did feel a couple hit my arms. And there was a couple that he ended up throwing where I was like, okay, if you throw one, it's gonna land, but I'm gonna take his power away from his body shot. And I landed a good knee, and I know he felt it too. And there was another, there was a couple of times I was timing it where he was throwing it, and I threw my front kick at the same time where my front kick landed before he is, he's there. So, um, you know, overall I did good. Um, I think my body kicks in the second round slowed him down a bit because I had two solid body, body kicks. And, um, um, and yeah. 
suffered those uh, last two losses. What's next for you? When do you want to get back in? Um, to be honest, just get some a little bit of R and R. Um, I was talking to my coach. Um, if, they, if I have a good opportunity for 2019, we might have to make it happen. Um, so uh, if, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, you know, I just wait to 2020. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, any opponents in mind? Uh, any opponents in mind? Top 15. <laughs> yeah. Great. So, what's your general impression while being here in, in Europe as, as you know, as being on a mission, but still like traveling all over the world in order to make your dreams come true? Man, to be honest, like, uh, I love my job. Um, you know, I love to fight. I don't like, to, I, I'm not working, I don't work a typical nine to five, and I love that too. Um, and the opportunity about fighting with the UFC is you get paid good, but also too. You get to experience different cultures. I like doing that, and um, I love going out of the country, being here, and uh, you know, Denmark is is pretty cool. It's Viking land, and, and you know, I'm, I'm I, if you watch, if, if anybody knows me, I watch a whole bunch of TV shows about, you know, just medieval times and stuff. So, um, just love it being here. Can't wait to check out Denmark tomorrow, though. Are there any other countries that you want to cross off your list? Um, <laughs> Well, uh, we'll be here. I think we'll be in Denmark for about two days. And um, her Germany has Oktoberfest coming around, and uh, I want to check that out. So uh, definitely going to shoot over to probably Hamburg and Munich for Oktoberfest. In the main event tonight, we have Jonathan Kamini, who used to fight in the division versus Jack Hermeson. Do you have any people for this fight? You know, the complicated fight, you know, Jared, you know, he's been looking really good his last couple of fights. Like, since he's dropped down to, to, to 85, like, he's just been a, a wrecking ball. And then, um, and then, uh, damn, I forget. Um, huh? Hermanson? Yeah, Hermanson. Uh, when he, first time I seen him fight uh, uh, David Branch and just mauled him, I was like, oh, shoot. Then after that, when he fought Jacques Ray and did the same thing, pretty much the same thing. Jared, I haven't seen him go all five rounds before if the fight goes, but I think if, if you, I think if you match power, I think Jared has more power, but his aggressive ability, he just come forward and he can eat people alive and he don't get tired. Um, and like, you can tell you got power. He, he gave Anderson Silva a good inside leg kick and he didn't come back up for that. So um, it should be quite interesting for the fight. I think if the fight uh, um, goes all five round Harmonson might end up winning, but you know, I'm taking Jared probably within the first three, four and three and a half rounds. Thank you. Thank you.